good evening friends so welcome to the 148th webinar today two weeks later will be 150th i would like you all to suggest what we should talk on 150th webinar today you know we have discussed obesity before. We all know the patient needs to lose weight. The patient knows he or she needs to lose weight. But does it happen? It doesn't happen. And more than us, quacks make money. People who promise the sky 10 kilos in 10 days, that kind of a thing. So as I was going through internet and now there are certain medications available, newer anti-diabetics come for weight loss. I thought let's talk today on newer insights into obesity. And again, of course, the main trigger was the last week's talk by Dr. Sanjay Rajdev where obesity was a primary risk factor for everything. So let's begin our journey. Obesity or morbid obesity? I think we are generally dealing with morbid obesity. In India, obesity and overweight are an epidemic because now we see even children, seven, eight, nine year old. I had an 11 year old child pre diabetic with no family history in parents and his etiology of this pre-diabetes was eating like nobody's business. He could eat two 8-inch pizzas now and after one hour he could eat two mesur masala dosas and still he was hungry. Although he was playing four hours a day professional football but then calorie intake was so much. So, we are all going to Dr. Minakshi saying, no voice. Others can hear me? Please, someone indicate whether you can hear me. Okay, I think Dr. Minakshi, you check your level. Thank you. And obesity is a major concern worldwide. That's why a lot of research is happening. While lifestyle modifications are a cornerstone of weight management, diet control, exercise, most patients do not achieve sustainable weight. A weight loss that is sustained over years. I have seen even patients who have undergone bariatric surgery have regained 15-20 kilos weight they lost initially 25-30 kilos in first one year. But after five years, it is the same. And uh, three of them at least had to were told by the surgeon that, okay, time to do another surgery. But they did not put themselves under the knife. So, there is a need for thoughtful pharmacological intervention. Thoughtful, I said. It's not something that just because it is available, you write. Because many drugs are not available in India. Others are expensive. Most of the people who approach you for weight loss are not very rich. In around 10 years ago, I had given one or two patients early stat. But then they stopped after two weeks. They said, Doc, it's too expensive to continue for three months, six months. We always go with BMI. We think BMI is the ultimate thing. But it does not always capture abnormal body fat. Actually, you should have calculation of body fat of course, getting a body composition analyzer for everyone is not 
affordable for all doctors also. But then we have to get an idea of the body fat of the percentage of the person. Sorry. The definition of obesity, clinical obesity, is excess abnormal body fat that impairs health. It is not just the weight versus your height. It is the abnormal body fat that impairs our health. BMI is measuring body size. So if I have a bodybuilder, 6 feet tall, 110 kilo, zero body fat, all muscle mass. By BMI standards, he would be morbid obesity. But by body fat standard, he would be a very lean person. On our population basis, it's a good measure because it's a good correlate of body fat. But it's not the exact correlate. In the clinic, if we are using BMI as a screening tool, for individuals with a BMI of 25 to 29.9, it is called overweight. Above 30 is obesity and above 35 is morbid obesity. Or some people say above 40 is morbid obesity. Many of you, many of us do not calculate BMI every time. So the simpler rule is ideal body weight by Broca's index Height in centimeters minus 100 for men and minus 105 for women gives you the ideal body weight. But again a question, don't feel bad. How many of you actually have a height measurement tool in the clinic? This is a very, very important ratio which we have to start using in our regular patient. So, although we use BMI, we are not making clinical diagnosis of obesity without evidence of abnormal body fat. We have to see abnormal body fat. Waist circumference over 35 inches in women and over 40 inches in men indicates abdominal adiposity in the body. Or when you have excess abdominal adiposity, more fat in the abdomen area, belly fat, you also can be sure that there is visceral fat around the organs. Waist hip ratio is a very good indicator of clinical obesity and body fat without actually having to calculate through body composition analyzer. WHO defines abnormal abdominal obesity in men as a waist hip ratio of at least 0.9. For women, it's ratio of 0.85 or more. So you measure waist at the navel and measure hips at the widest part. Divide hip measurement by waist from waist measurement. If men is above 9, point 0.9 is abdominal obesity. Female above 0 0.85. Above 1 for either gender is a clinical diagnosis of obesity and major body fat percentage. A word of caution. Although I use this parameter, but I have female assistant, I have a female assistant doctor. I don't get into touching the females or even trying to ask them the question of waist size, a new patient. Every patient you can't start. We should ask permission before we do that. Can I, because you know, they have never been exposed to waist and uh, hip measurement, even if they want to 10 places for weight loss. 
If you can manage it, it's great. It's an objective measurement of obesity. You can actually record and when it goes down, you can see. Clinical obesity, a person with more than body weight and any of the cardiovascular, cardiometabolic risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia and hypothyroidism also constitute clinical obesity. If abnormal, also point to clinical obesity. So we need to use our judgment to exclude those with large body size, as I said, bodybuilder, who have an increased BMI but do not have clinical obesity. I was, as I had told you, I was in Singapore two weeks ago. I have brought a body composition analyzer from there I am setting it up. Once I feel it works well, I will tell you all. It, I am sure it's available in India also. It is made by MI company, Xiaomi. And in Singapore, it cost me something like 1500 rupees. So if it works well, I will tell you. Then it, you can get a proper report of entire body composition analysis. And once we are sure of body fat, we look more closely at the patient and patient's physical and laboratory values. Never start a patient on weight loss therapy without checking the basic body values. Whether the patient has evidence of excess abnormal body fat or patient has any cardiometabolic disorder. Clinical obesity means that excess abnormal fat that's really driving the risk for type 2 diabetes, for hypertension, dyslipidemia, cardiovascular disease. There's a term coined diabetes. This person, you need not even do wastage ratio. You can easily make out if there is so much fat on the abdomen, there must be tremendous fat around the organs. Other risk factors are in addition to diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, obstructive sleep apnea, chronic resistant fungal infections in the folds. Why is it harmful? Fat is fat after all. So when our body exceeds its ability to store fat, in healthy depots like subcutaneous deposition is still called Healthy depot, abdomen, hips and thighs. Then fat starts collecting ectopically elsewhere. That's in pancreas, peripancreatic fat, in muscles, in liver, around the epicardium, the epicardial fat. And around the kidneys, the perinephric fat. This visceral fat is problematic. It is toxic as compared to the subcutaneous fat. This fat has a very adverse profile. It is lipotoxic. It looks different than subcutaneous fat. It's full of macrophages it's producing angiotensinogen, so higher risk of hypertension and other adverse cytokines and lipokines. Hence, it produces the prothrombotic and pro-inflammatory milieu or surrounding that exists in obesity and location is very important. So, visceral fat, you get an ultrasound and if you get ultrasound, may not show pancreas very well. But if you get to have a report of CT, peripancreatic fat increased or perinephric fat increased, or in an angiography, if you have a color CT angio, you will see periepicardial fat also. So all those are risky. The coronary arteries run right through the epicardial fat and are directly exposed to all the toxic effects of the abnormal adipose tissue. All the prothrombotic and pro-inflammatory markers that are being produced by this visceral fat 
the coronary arteries are directly exposed to. Sorry, it's the same thing come up again. I'm sorry. So, who's more at risk? Genetic susceptibility. There are over 200 common gene variants which are inclined to give obesity in families. If environment is obesogenic, food and physical activity environment. If, you know, people say that my father also was fat, yeah, that's okay. But then the whole family consumes the same diet. The whole family has the same tendency for exercise. You will see if there are three brothers, it will never happen that one is physically very active and other two are sedentary. The same lifestyle. Then antidepressants, antipsychotics, which we are using with greater frequency nowadays, drive weight gain. And women, once they have lost weight before marriage, once they go on OCPs, it drives weight regain also. Plus, there are many factors that cause expression of obesity in genetically susceptible individuals and one of the most common here is stress. In stress, the favorite foods are what are harmful to you, chocolates, fried. A stressed person will never take buttermilk, will always take a Coke. Then, we have patients who have succeeded in weight loss, but majority of them have regained. Once weight is gained, it is difficult to lose. And when lost, once lost, it's difficult to maintain that. As I said, sustainable weight loss. When patients lose weight or try to lose weight, their bodies react by changing the appetite hormone pattern. They tend to suppress the appetite hormones, making them more hungry and less satisfied with the foods that they are supposed to eat. And they become more susceptible to rewarding food. This is after they have achieved weight loss. And why this happens? Because our body basal metabolic rate is proportionate to our body weight. When our body weight goes down, I have lost 10 kilos, my BMR will be low and that research has shown increases hunger. When they lose weight, their metabolic rate also decreases. So double whammy, we have more appetite and we have a slower metabolism. Appetite increases and BMR is slow. So we are not burning calories. Both of these things drive weight regain. Patients will always say, even doctor will say, I don't know why you are regaining. You must be doing something wrong. Even if we are successful, I am sure many doctors have tried here losing weight and they have been successful, but they have regained. Resting metabolic rate, if it is low, is associated with hunger, Self-determined meal size. I will think how much, I will decide how much I want to eat. I will decide how much energy I want. And that increases the appetite. Because I have achieved what I wanted to achieve and now I am time celebrating. That's why losing weight with lifestyle alone and sustaining it is difficult. I am not saying that uh, weight loss pills are the answer. But all I am saying is that it is difficult to lose weight and maintain that weight loss. Now, I have a patient who has started on Herbalife. She is a young girl of around 28 years. She is 95 kilos. So we started proper plan. She was losing one, one and a half kilo a month, which we were happy with because then we don't want the 
skin to hang out. But then she wanted fast and we were measuring inches also. Multiple places we were taking dimensions. When she was losing one, one and a half kilo a month, no, she was losing inches, half an inch here, three foot of an inch there. Now one month, she's taken Herbaline. She's lost four kilos. But not even 0.1 inch. So then I had to counsel her. See, you are losing weight. You're not losing fat. Because understand one thing. Whatever space one kilogram of muscle will occupy, one kilogram of fat occupies five times that space. So this lady, because she is not exercising properly, is losing her muscle mass. There is no fat loss. Our aim of weight loss should be fat loss, not just weight loss. Many patients need anti-obesity medications, but whether we should give or not, because any patient you give a medicine for any condition, no. Like if you give a borderline dyslipidemia, you give... Then they think, I am taking tablet. No, my lipids will go down. Why should I exercise? Then there are medicines that work through appetite to help them lose enough weight. Appetite suppressants. But then you can't continue it for long. Once weight goes down, appetite comes up again. Then there is a yo-yo effect. What is yo-yo effect? I am 95. I go through serious diet control exercise. I reach 90. And as I described just now that when weight loss occurs, again appetite increases. I again come to 95. I go back to 90. I come to 95. I may think I was 95. I am 95. But in this yo-yo effect, if my body fat percentage at the first stage was 35%, now it will be 45%. So this is your effect. You have weight gain. You start a diet. Metabolism slow down. You lose weight. End of diet. You resume normal eating. And again you gain weight. Before, after, and after, after is much more than before. The yo-yo effect is a very common situation in which people struggle to maintain their target weight during weight loss programs. So make changes in such a way that patient can continue for rest of their life. In the beginning, people start losing weight, but then after their weightless they become weight less, less of weight. They regain all the weight they have lost. Body fat increases even if the weight is same. Another situation where regaining all the weight loss, lost weight occurs. An obese girl gets engaged. Everybody says, now you have three months, you must lose at least 15 kilos. So she loses 15 kilos. Now she's come to her in-law's house. And then, within six months, she becomes pregnant. Pregnant women can't be allowed to diet. No? So re she regains... All that 15 kilos she has lost plus the weight gain of pregnancy. I have had two cases where we actually broke our head that why in this pregnancy this lady is increasing weight like magic. We didn't know. She didn't tell us. Till one endocrinologist said you ask her what was her weight before marriage which she brought down. And she attained that same weight within third month of pregnancy.
the issue of weight regain and hormonal changes that occur with weight loss. Which hormones? Our appetite hormones. Just frankly for many patients is directly contradictory to their goals because when weight loss occurs, the appetite hormones trigger a higher appetite and it's a diabolical thing. You can't explain it to them. Now, why are we talking now of medication? Because our knowledge of the gut hormones have increased and now there are medications around the gut hormones, the appetite hormones, the satiety hormones, which are helping in weight loss. The GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonists are producing some of the most robust weight loss to date. What are the weight loss drugs? These medications can reverse some of the negative metabolic profile that promotes weight regain. Orly stat is the first one or the oldest. Does not affect appetite. It is a lipase inhibitor. It works in the stomach and in small intestine and by blocks the absorption of fat by blocking enzymes responsible for breakdown of fat and produces modest weight loss. The brand names are Lipocut, Ostad, Zero Fat, Obelit, available in 60 mg and 120 mg tablets. Before you prescribe anything, check out the cost and ask the patient, can you take it for 3 to 6 months? All others work through appetite modification. The other drug that we will talk now. Naltrexone, which is a drug used for uh, opium addiction and bupropion, an antidepressant, which is also used for smoking cessation. This combination and fentermine and topiramate affect central neurotransmitters and suppress appetite. Then we have liraglutide and semaglutide GLP-1 receptor agonists, which are basically anti-diabetic medications, but also giving good weight loss. Naltrexone, bupropion, fentermine, topiramate combinations and liraglutide, they all produce weight loss in the range of 5 to 10 percent on an average when they are given at their approved doses along with lifestyle recommendation. That along with lifestyle recommendation is a very strong recommendation. You cannot depend only on the drugs. Naltrexone, Bupropion. I could not find any brand name available in India. Basically because Naltrexone is a prohibited drug Pentermine, Propyramate, Indian brand is Petralis and Cusimia is a brand available overseas. Liraglutide is the brand name of Victoza and Saxendra and Semaglutide is a game changer. Given 2.4 mg subcutaneously per week associated with 15-17% to 17 average weight loss I have never used these. If somebody has used, I would like to share your experience after the webinar is over. Then we have semaglutide injection Ozempic. Again, I couldn't find it in Indian stores. Maybe some companies are supplying directly to patients. Oral one to be given for diabetes management is called Rabelsus 3, 7 and 14 milligram tablets. Side effects. Any drug which is going to give good side effects will also have bad side effects. Good effects will have bad side effects. Orly stat has to be taken three times before meals because you take three meals and you have to prevent lipid absorption. If it's blocking fat, it allows the fat to go out in stool 
So these patients will suffer from satoria or fat in the stools. Those on this drug for a long time have to be given supplements because if fats are not being absorbed, all the fat-soluble vitamins are also not being absorbed. Pentermin topiramate, we know topiramate is associated with fetal cleft palate. So when you are giving this, if you are giving this, women of childbearing potential, I am not saying childbearing age, anybody who can become pregnant has to have a negative pregnancy test before the treatment and then once every month till they are on it because they can't be allowed to conceive. Naltrexone, bupropion, it increases blood pressure so you can't give it to patients who are hypertensive or pre-hypertensive. And bupropion can unmask seizures. I use bupropion alone for smoking cessation for one to three months time and it works well. Liraglutide and semaglutide have the same side effects profile as all the drugs in this GLP-1 agonists. Should not prescribe in patients who have a personal or family history of multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2 or MEN2 or medullary thyroid cancer. What is MEN2? Causes tumors in thyroid, parathyroid, adrenal, lips, mouth, eyes and digestive tract. There is another drug being tested by FDA. New medication, terazepatide, which is also a GLP-1 receptor agonist and a GLP-GIP, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, is still under trials. It is likely to give 15 to 22 percent average weight loss. I don't know what will be the cost. I don't know what will be the administration. Under FDA review, not approved yet for weight management. If you want your patients to have weight loss without yo-yo effect. First I said that give them a plan which is not for short time. Like if my diabetes patient has to be given a diet plan that is for rest of his or her life. A diabetes is not going to go away. All this talk of reversal and all is just scam. You can Control it. You can't make a person non-diabetic so that he can eat sweets as much as he wants. Reduce body fat and maintain muscle mass. Now my target is muscle mass has to go up. So I should not allow only cardiology, cardio exercises. I have to allow weight lifting also to convert the fat to muscle. I need to focus on inches loss also, not only weight loss. Skipping meals must be strictly avoided. Small frequent meals, six time breakfast, that is better. Restrict amount of diet intake, as I said, restrict amount. So, you know, if you give two meals or one meal, no. Then the person decides how much he or she will eat. This way you can say one apple is one snack. A bowl of curd is one snack. And then they do not feel hungry. Eat more of low calorie foods, salads, fruits, vegetables. Just for your information, 3 to 350 gram of raw salad, cucumber, tomatoes, carrot, radish, beetroot gives you calories equivalent to one medium-sized chapati without oil. So you can understand how much satiety one chapati will give and how much satiety this salad will give. Avoid eating high-calorie and fatty diets cooked by using oil such as deep-fried or even pan-fried. Shallow-fried also you have to be cautious. Even olive oil shallow fried is not good enough. 
in mediterranean meals they cook vegetables without oil and once it is cooked then they put maybe a spoon or two spoon of oil exercise regularly with diet modification must 30 minute every day aerobic 30 minute every day weights especially during the first 6 months it's advisable to have regular exercise at least 150 minute a week so 30 minutes a day 5 days a week and if you are morbidly obese then i would say add another 20 minutes but after 6 months it should not go up to maintain healthy weight during the long term weight management the duration of exercise should be increased up to 200 to 300 minutes per week. So, almost an hour a day and should be consistently continued for at least one year and if you do it for one year, then my dear, it becomes a habit. You never want to give up. Okay. There is a comment by Dr. Lina Chopra. Siema glutide injectable not available in India. Yes, I tried. I couldn't get. Rabelsa's 3.7 used primarily as weight loss during risk. Drug irrespective of BMI. Irrespective of blood sugar levels. Siema glutide 14 is not allowed to use in India. And personally discussed with the endocrinologist when a family member was prescribed this drug. There is drug shortage abroad and in India too. Prescribed quite often these days. It suppresses the appetite drastically initially, but very, very expensive, around 3,500 for a strip of 10 tablets. What exercise is walking only will do? See, walking, you have to know at what speed you are walking. I will just give a small formula that you do. Last slide. Okay. I'll just show you the last slide. Okay, the formula for weight loss, 220 minus patient's age, suppose patient is 40 years, this equals 180, this is your target heart rate, 75% of 180 or target heart rate, whatever it is. 30 minutes of brisk walk with HR at 75% of 180 is 135. At 135 to 138. This is effective exercise. 65 to 75% will be equivocal. It will neither gain weight nor lose weight. And anything below 65% is useless. So people who stroll, they are never going to lose weight. And then weight lifting this is the answer. Is it possible yoga and walk will help? Dr. Hafri Zirani, when I said this no target heart rate going up, you require the pulse rate to go up to a certain level for the aerobic effect to occur, the fat to burn, the cholesterol to burn, the sugar to burn. Yoga causes bradycardia. So, yoga is good for 
flexibility, agility. Brisk walking, you have to remember what is it. And uh, weight lifting has to be done because if the fat is more, then you have to burn that fat. Is it possible with diet and exercise instead of medication? Yes, Dr. Chayaranka, very possible. I have managed 15 kilos weight loss with just diet and exercise, no medication. Massage and steam bath, no. It is just a false feeling that you are losing, you are sweating, that you are losing weight, no. Smoking and weight loss relation. See, smokers generally, I, I may be wrong here, smokers generally do not exercise. They are very casual about their health. Otherwise, they won't be smoking also. So, Dr. Upinder wants this thing to be explained again. 220 minus patient's age is the target heart rate, THR. So, suppose the age is 40, it is 180 target heart rate. Now, if you take 75% of 180, that is 135. Sorry, is it 135? 45, 45, 90, 135. 30 minutes of brisk walk with heart rate at 135 to 138. We don't want it to go above. That is effective for burning your cholesterol, burning your sugar, burning your fat. 65 to 75 percent if you achieve, it is equivocal. So that is why, you know, people who walk on the road know they have to have a digital watch which gives them heart rate. But I have seen these watches are giving false tachycardia. So at least once let them go to a gym and see at what speed they have to walk. Another way I explain early start is immediately after meals, yes. Another thing which I have not read anywhere to patients who are married or who are sexually active. If they cannot go to a gym, I explain to them in this way. Some of you may laugh, some of you may follow. I say soon after you had sex, you feel a pleasurable breathlessness for about 10 to 20 seconds. That breathlessness is not distressful. I want you to feel that pleasurable breathlessness for 25 minutes when you walk. Two and a half minutes warm up, two and a half minutes cool down. And believe me, it works. Hypothalamic, powerful in it with that work, natural occurring of farm I didn't understand the question. STM, please repeat. Any economic Ayurvedic preparation? Dr. Chayaranka, Ayurvedic. Homeopathy, allopathy, unless lifestyle management is done, there is no shortcut to weight loss. Dr. Kastiwal is saying, one of my patients lost 12 to 13 kilos in 6 months. His waist had also reduced by 3 inches, but still has abdominal obesity. What to do? Continue. Continue losing. Any investigation to be done routinely or regularly? Yes. Good labs will have an obesity profile. I think do that. If you don't want to spend that much money, at least HbA1c, fasting, PP, lipid profile, uric acid, and FT3, FT4, TSH. Now, I, I will give an example. You all have seen me from the time of COVID. There was a time that uh, I could not go into a ready-made shop and uh, buy a ready-made trouser or a shirt. I used to visit the large size stores all. 
Of course, I was fitting into size one or two. Then I took it on myself that I have to lose weight. Today, I can buy a 40 inch waist ka trouser ready made and wear it. So, what I'm saying, it's possible, but then it has to be, you can't cheat in eating, you can't cheat in exercise. Commitment is a must. Powerful hypothalamic based anorexic drugs, I would say don't try. Because anything that works there, no, suppressant can also give CNS suppression, depression, always very risky. It depends on how much motivation we can do and then take on. So, before I sign off, please suggest some good topic for 150th webinar. This time I thought I will not call an expert. I will only take. So, suggest a good topic which will be of benefit to everyone. Thank you very much.